Hey guys, Investruis here, and today we're going to be talking about what Bitcoin is. So what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency released in the year 2009. It is considered an intangible asset, which means it has no physical presence. You are unable to touch it or feel it. It is also the first decentralized digital currency, meaning that anyone is able to make their own independent decisions. The banks and the government are not involved. It is just peer-to-peer -peer network. For example, Chad can send Bitcoin to Brad without needing a bank to verify the transaction. Instead of banks verifying, computers verify the transactions by solving very difficult math problems. This is through the process of mining, which is incentivized. People mine by setting up their computers to solve math problems, to validate other people's transactions, and in return they get awarded in Bitcoin. It is also an open source, meaning that anyone is able to mine Bitcoin. So the price of the Bitcoin. As Bitcoins continue to be mined, they begin to create more value since more people begin to own them. An analogy you could use is the value of trading cards. The longer you hold them, the more value they tend to take on as more people begin to collect them. The only difference is, those trading cards are not a universal means of exchange. This means that you can't go to a car dealership and trade your cards for a car. However, Bitcoin has consolidated this process. Just like money, they are a medium of exchange. One of the reasons why the price of Bitcoin is so high is because it is a scarce asset. There are only going to be 21 million Bitcoin created. As people learn more about Bitcoin, they want to invest in it and get a hold of it. This increases the demand for Bitcoin. However, there is limited supply. The law of supply and demand states that if there is low supply and high demand for a product, the price increases. To put this into perspective, Think of an item like a toy that has very low availability. Let's say there are only two of those toys in the world. A lot of people want that toy so people bid for a higher price for them to be guaranteed that toy, gradually increasing the price of it because of how desirable it is. Essentially, Bitcoin becomes worth more as time goes on due to limited supply. They are not like the traditional currencies such as the US dollar and the Canadian dollar, which lose value as time goes on due to having an infinite supply. The initial value of Bitcoin was created through the mining process since money and time was used to create them. So how do Bitcoins work? They have built a transaction system through its mining process. They have a public ledger known as a blockchain that is available for anyone to see. Every time a new block is mined, the data from that block is added to the public ledger and is then confirmed. There are numerous checks prior to that confirmation which makes the blockchain irreversible and secure. Each transaction is subject to a public key and a private key. Anyone can see your public key, it is your Bitcoin address. But your private key, only you could see it. When you send a Bitcoin, you sign the transaction by combining both your public and private keys together. This creates a certificate that the transaction transaction came from you. So where do you store your Bitcoin? It is best to store your Bitcoin in a wallet, which basically serves as your own bank. A wallet program allows users to transfer their Bitcoin between one another. There are several ways wallets can be stored. Examples of these are paper wallets, hardware wallets, software wallets, and much more. I am personally a big fan of the hardware wallets such as the Ledger Nano S. It is very secure and you are able to store unlimited different cryptocurrencies in it. Moving on, Bitcoins are stored on the public ledger so they are essentially always available for you. What you are doing by putting them on a wallet is you are securing them. Also, you are accessing their rights to be used when you exchange them through a wallet. This is the way to go if you want your Bitcoins to be safely secured. Never leave your Bitcoin in an exchange because if that company such as Coinbase gets hacked or goes bankrupt, then you are affected as well. By having it stored in a wallet, it is essentially your own bank. It is very similar to the idea of people putting cash under their bed, but this is more accessible, profitable, and secure. So be smart and secure Bitcoin in a wallet. We move on to investing in Bitcoin. Bitcoin can be exchanged for other currencies, goods, and services, just like you would with US dollar and the Canadian dollar. What I like about cryptocurrencies is that you don't have to fully invest in one Bitcoin. You can invest in fractions of a Bitcoin. This means that you are able to buy $100 worth of Bitcoin or even $50. You just need to make sure that you are above the minimum requirement when buying on an exchange. So why do people invest in Bitcoin? For starters, it is a very fast payment method, just like credit cards. They are done instantly. It is a very cheap form of currency, meaning that it has very low fees. The idea that it is decentralized and having no central banks with power over the users is highly likable. Another reason why they invest is the security functionality of it. It is 100% owned by you, meaning that no one can freeze or access your account. If you want to get started investing in Bitcoin, I would recommend signing up to two different exchanges, one to buy Bitcoin and one to buy altcoins. Personally, I use Coinbase and Quadriga to buy Bitcoin. Coinbase is the most popular exchange to buy Bitcoin. Quadriga is an exchange for Canadians. These two are the exchanges in which you could buy the big three cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. 
Then I move it to an exchange that trades altcoins to diversify my investments. Personally, I prefer the platform on Binance since they are not as laggy as others are, and the fees are lower than most other exchanges. In the end, it all comes down to your preference. Finally, I would suggest to get a wallet to securely store your cryptos or altcoins. You are now an investor, but make sure to do your own research. Look at the news and look for patterns. Not everyone here is a financial advisor. It's better to be safe than sorry. I hope you guys learned a good understanding of what Bitcoin is from this video. If you want to learn more about cryptocurrency, check out my previous video. Excellent the basics of what you need to know. Other than that, if you have any questions or feedback, leave them in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button. It helps a lot. And if you want more videos just like this, subscribe. Thanks for watching.